Okay, so uh, this is the um, uh, product code example uh, for the specific case when k is equal to 4 and so therefore n is equal to 9. Now, uh, obviously other values of k and n are possible but uh, because uh, we are restricting k and n both to be perfect squares um, the overall arrangement looks uh, like what is shown here now you can imagine that this is not necessarily the only way that you can do uh, this type of product encoding uh, you can make uh, this to be instead of uh, a perfect square you can make this to be a rectangle uh, and then do essentially the same thing and so no wonder uh, there is indeed a scheme like that which is known as rectangular parity coding scheme or RPC uh, the product code or the square product codes are some specific uh, instances of this more generalized family of RPC codes and these are actually described in figure 6-3 of MIT lecture notes number 6. I'll be putting this on our classroom, Google Classroom. And this particular example considers k equal to 8, n equal to 14. Uh, so the RPC introduces 6 parity bits and r is therefore 8 divided by 14 which is 4 over 7. Let us take a look at that uh, very quickly. Uh, this is right here. So this is the uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is the uh, benefit of remote sessions. I am sneezing, but you don't have to worry that I'll be passing some unknown infection to you. Okay, and joke aside. So here, uh, there are uh, eight message bits that are arranged in this rectangular array. Uh, but then the procedure of encoding each row and each column using uh, an SPC code is, is exactly the same as in product code. So you can see that there are a total of six parity bits that are getting introduced. Here we do not put a parity on the parity so this particular cell is empty and therefore the total size of the encoded bits is 6 plus 8 which is 14. Okay so I, I think it will be good for you if you um, if you work out um, an example of uh, this um, RPC codes, uh, specifically see what G and H matrices look like for this RPC code. Okay, uh, one last channel coding scheme that we are going to examine in a little bit more detail uh, is called this Hemming code. And for Hemming code, the number of information bits is 4 and the total number of bits is 7. Uh, the Hemming code introduces 3 parity bits and therefore the rate is 4 over 7. Actually the rate of this code is matching the rate of this example of RPC. Both have rate 4 over 7. But Hemming code actually uses uh, k equal to 4 instead of k equal to 8 and n is equal to 7 instead of n equal to 14. The way it introduces the three parity bits is shown by these equations over here. Um, and so remember uh, we have been calling the parity checkers as the supervisors. Uh, so there are three parity checks. Uh, these are denoted as S1, S2, S3. Okay, there is a typo here. This should be S2, this should be S3. Uh, S1 is a parity on M1, M2, M4 and P1. So this is the parity on uh, these four bits. The parity check. Basically the modulo 2 sum of M1, M2, M4 and P1 should be 
uh, should be zero. Then S2 is a parity on M1, M3 and M4 and that requires a new parity bit P2 which is what is shown here. And then finally the supervisory check S3 uh, adds a parity bit P3 and it does the checking of M2, M3 and M4. And so again uh, you are asked to determine the G and H matrices for uh, the Hemming code and when you do this math by the way the math is very simple you just look at these equations and from that you are going to be right away able to determine the H matrix and actually even G matrix both of them you are going to be able to just uh, con you, you will be converting uh, this three equations into H and G matrices. Uh, and once you do that, I would like you to observe uh, the pattern that the columns of H together make. There, there is some uh, a pattern going on there. So take a look at it. What is that pattern? And then the other thing that maybe you, you may want to think about a little bit is that um, if you are given H matrix then you can just do some uh, transposing and some arrangement of the elements of H matrix to get G matrix and actually vice versa. Are you able to figure out what uh, that a method is so that you can get G from H directly. So, so take a look at it, think about it and um, I think I'll be putting this uh, as some question answers uh, hopefully on Google Classroom I need to figure out how to do that but then if uh, you should be able to post your answers there. Okay now we have already seen that uh, the parameters uh, okay uh, actually not all the parameters not n k and u but the rate r of the Hemming code and the rate r of the rpc code are identical n k and u for the rpc code is just twice of the values of n k and u for the Hemming code Uh, although we have not verified this uh, or we have not evaluated it, uh, what I can tell you is that the minimum hemming distance for both of these codes is also same, it is 3 bits, which means that TC is equal to 1 bit for both the hemming code and the RPC code. But the hemming codes are actually maybe slightly more efficient. They're they are a little more nicer than uh, the RPC code and that is because you can see that uh, each of the parity bits here P1, P2 and P3 it protects the same number of message bits and 3 bits specifically in this case. So the protection is kind of equally divided among the parity bits. Whereas if you look at uh, the RPC code, you, you can see that uh, these four parity bits are protecting only two bits, whereas these two parity bits on the column, they end up protecting four bits. And so there is some in, uneven uh, assignment of parity to the uh, message bit that those parities uh, are checking and so uh, Hemming codes are actually uh, considered to be more better organized codes uh, out of all of the uh, linear block codes of small lens that that we have seen uh, so far. Now 
these formulations of G and H matrices that, that we have developed, uh, it, it applies to a very large uh, class of channel coding schemes which are known as linear block codes or LBCs. Uh, this SPC, the repetition code, the product code, the rectangular parity method, the Hemming code, they all actually fall under this linear block coding schemes. Uh, and in fact, there are I mean, uh, all of these codes that we have seen um, are not tremendously powerful. Uh, except I would say the product code, RPC and Hemming code, especially when you start making the lengths bigger, th then they may have some, some advantages. Uh, but still they are kind of simple schemes that, that you know, we could understand, uh, we could get a handle on over just fast half an hour of um, uh, session. Th there is not some really deep mathematics and some very clever uh, scheme that, that that is going on in uh, in any of this uh, linear block coding schemes that we have studied. Although I would say that the Hemming code design is pretty considered to be pretty clever. The Hemming codes were designed, uh, I think, towards the end of uh, 1940s, around 1947-48. And in those days, to come up with such an elegant uh, coding scheme uh, was was pretty impressive. Uh, and the work that uh, Richard Hemming did was really path-breaking uh, work in terms of coming up with the channel coding techniques. And therefore, you see uh, the name Hemming come up in a lot of different contexts, uh, not only in the context of the Hemming code, which he invented, but also in terms of hemming distance, uh, minimum hemming distance, etc. Uh, so, but uh, after uh, the invention of Hemming code by uh, Richard Hemming, uh, the mathematicians started developing more elegant, more powerful, more mathematical techniques, uh, such as the Gole codes, the bose choudhury hockenhagen codes, or shortly known as BCH codes, uh, the Reed Salomon codes or RS codes, uh, they all are in the family of linear block code schemes. But their study requires uh, more advanced uh, algebraic understanding, and, and so we will not uh, consider a study of these codes in this course. Uh, now, the channel coding scheme uh, that you are currently uh, studying as a part of your project, uh, the convolution codes, they are also actually technically uh, still the linear block codes. They, they, they can, um, I mean, one can define H and G matrices even for the convolution codes. Uh, remember in convolution code also we have uh, said that there is certain length k of the inputs there is corresponding length n of the outputs and so on uh, so uh, technically and uh, from a mathematical point of view convolution codes are also uh, the linear block codes uh, but conventionally they are considered as a part of a different family uh, whenever people talk about the linear block codes that typically do not uh, include the convolution code in that uh, framework. Um, now all of the codes that uh, belong to the LBC, whether you take RPC, Hemming code, SPC, Reed solomon BCH, uh, because uh, anyone convolution codes, all of them, uh, because they belong to this linear block code family, they all have some properties uh, th that that are quite uh, useful to understand, uh, and and most of these properties actually are derived by uh, considering that for a for a binary sequence C of length n to be a valid code word, it has to satisfy this parity check 
equation h times c should be an all zero vector.